everybody, it's Chris Bumbray here again for Joe Blow at CinemaCon. It's a little bit later in the week, so I'm probably looking a little bit more warm than I was in that earlier video that I did about the Warner Brothers panel because, hey, you know, that was day one in Vegas and now we're on to day three in Vegas. <laughs> so, and as anybody who's ever been to Vegas can tell you, it's been a bit of a journey. Uh, so great, great footage today. We saw, uh, we went to panels for Lionsgate and for Universal. Um, I'm gonna get to the Universal stuff in a little bit and I'm gonna start with Lionsgate because I saw some footage that I think is really gonna get people excited. But the number one one that I wanna talk about is Ballerina. So the movie now is, is, is everybody knows that it's being partly reshot, right? Chad Stahelski is teaming up with the director Len Wiseman to put in these kind of big action set pieces, right? Um, because from how they explained it at the at the, the the footage presentation this morning, it was tracking very well. It has the potential to be a big hit, but the action it just wasn't probably wasn't delivering what people might expect given the John Wick movies, how much they've pushed the bar over the years. So they're going back in and they're adding a ton of action, but they did still show us some footage, I guess, from the Len Wiseman version. And it looked amazing, actually. Um, so Anna de Armas, uh, she plays, you know, the ballerina. Um, the action's different than in the John Wick movies. She's a much more feral character, less polished in her, in her fighting. Um, good martial arts, very bloody, very, very gory. Um, and yeah, you, you see some some of the old favorites from the John Wick series, including Lance Reddick, which is always kind of bittersweet. And then, of course, Mr. Wick himself shows up at the end of the trailer. And, you know, to note, it takes place between John Wick 3 and John Wick 4. So in addition to that, and I saw another kind of cool looking Keanu Reeves movie uh, presented at, at, uh, at the Lionsgate panel called Good Fortune. So it's directed by Aziz Ansari uh, and it co-stars Seth Rogen as well. So Aziz Ansari is kind of this put upon guy who's, you know, he's broke, he's, he's not happy with his life and he works for this rich jerk played by Seth Rogen. So <laughs> Keanu Reeves is his guardian angel, Gabriel, and he even wears like fluffy white wings and he's supposed to be kind of a fuck up angel. Like he just doesn't know what he's doing. So he, he's the, so he, he gives them this, he, he does something where he switches Rogan and Anzari's place, right? To make Anzari the, the rich jerk and, 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 Ro, and Rogan the poor guy. And supposed to teach Anzari that, you know, he's, he's not supposed to be, um, that he's supposed to value his life even if he's poor, right? But he just enjoys being a rich asshole. So basically Keanu Reeves' character loses his wings and the three of them end up living together. <laughs> so it looks kind of funny and, and, and Zari was, was pretty hilarious in the, in the panel presentation, said that he really wanted to do something kind of in the vein of, you know, Anchorman or 40 year old virgin to bring, you know, people back to the theaters to go see comedies. Como están, bitches? Spanish language news is here. So I'm hoping that that one will do really well. Um, saw some footage from Borderlands. I think it looks good. I mean, you know, it's the video. I'm not super familiar with the video game. Um, Eli Roth was there and he said it's kind of, you know, his version of Raiders of the Lost Ark meets uh, Mad Max Fury Road, right? I mean, the movie that he didn't mention that he probably should have mentioned is Guardians of the Galaxy because it looks so much in the vein of Guardians of the Galaxy, especially with all the 70s classic rock needle drops. Um, but hey, I mean, it looks like it's fun. It looks like Kate Blanchett's having a whale of a time. Kevin Hart. Uh, I, I mean, you know, I'll go see it. I, I'm, I'm not super excited for it, but you know, it's definitely one that I'll check out. One that I am kind of excited for, and it kind of came out of nowhere, is uh, this movie called Flight Risk, which is directed by Mel Gibson. So in this one, Michelle Dockery from, from Downton Abbey, she plays a US Marshal who's flying a witness in a mob trial, played by Topher Grace, um, kind of in a, a, single, a single passenger plane, right? And the, the pilot is Mark Wahlberg. So it turns out Mark Wahlberg's character is a, not only a hitman, who's been assigned to kill Topher Grace's character, but he's also completely out of his mind. So let me the fucking out! Right, so it's Mark Wahlberg playing a villain, and I've always been a fan of his, but I really have thought in recent years that he really needed to shake things up, and boy, it looks like Gibson's getting a really unhinged performance from him. And they even kind of shave his head to give him a bald pate, to basically look like if I was to grow in this U, this U here, maybe look a little bit like Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> probably not. I probably never look like Mark Wahlberg regardless, but anyway. His name is Cyrus Grissom, AKA Cyrus the Virus. It looks like a crazy, insane movie. And uh, I'm, I mean, it, it, I think it'll be a big commercial hit for Gibson. I really do. 
And then, of course, I also saw footage from the Michael Jackson biopic, Michael, which is directed by Antoine Fuqua. So nobody was there because they're still shooting the movie, but the producer, Graham King, was. And he actually showed us the first footage from the film, like a trailer that they cut together. And I mean, look, the thing about Michael Jackson, the thing about making a Michael Jackson biopic is that it's gonna be really controversial. Like Graham King himself said, everybody's got an opinion on Michael Jackson. They're definitely not afraid to share it. Um, but they keep saying over and over again that it's going to be accurate. Accurate is, is a word that they keep, that they keep um, repeating. And I, I don't know if it's even possible to make an accurate biopic because I feel like nobody really knows the full story to some extent, right? So you're kind of making a, a, a guess, you know? And, I, and I, I mean, and considering the fact that they've licensed 30 Michael Jackson songs from the family and, you know, Michael Jackson's own nephew plays him in the film, I don't know how necessarily balanced it's going to be. But that said, I mean, it looks like a blast. I love Michael Jackson's music. Um, it looks like J Jafar Jackson does an amazing job, nails the voice. Um, you know, it's gonna be, even if, even if it's controversial, even if it's maybe surface level, which it may not be, um, it'll at least be very entertaining. I would be shocked if it wasn't like a big hit. Um, and you know, I'm a sucker for, for a biopic, so bring it on. Okay, next up is Twisters that was at the Universal panel. So, Lee Isaac Chung, the director, he did a really good movie a couple years ago called Minari. Now, if you've seen Minari, maybe not the first person you'd think of to direct this massive blockbuster sequel, but, you know, the thing about that first movie, if you if you look at Twister, it, it's a very human-driven movie, right? And I think that, that is kind of what he's doing with this with this version as well, right? Um, so it's got Daisy Edgar Jones, Glenn Powell, Anthony Ramos, and it seems quite a bit like the first movie where the whole like opposites attract thing going on. You know, there, you've got that kind of frayed relationship at its heart. It looks like it's between Glenn Powell and Daisy Edgar Jones' character in this movie. Glenn Powell, the way to describe him, I think, would be like if they made the Carrie Elway's character in the first film kind of the lead, but made him more likable uh, and, and more extreme, um, that kind of is how it feels. And Daisy O. Jones seems like she's playing a character very similar to the Helen Hunt character. Um, I mean, the footage they showed is great. The carnage looks incredible. I mean, I love Twister. I, I go back and I revisit it all the time, but some of the CGI hasn't held up super well over the years. And this one, I mean, it makes all the effects work in the first movie look look pr primitive by 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 co by contrast in some ways. And what's interesting is that he said he sent out real storm chasers to get real footage of the storms, and that they tried to be practical as much as possible for for a lot of it. Uh, and you can really tell it looks it looks awesome. If anything, though, there's a little too much carnage. Maybe like it looks almost like um you know like a, like you're gonna see like cities destroyed almost, which didn't really feel like that was in the spirit of the first movie, which was a little bit more modest in scale, but hey, I mean, it actually looks like a blast. The other movie that I was really excited about that they showed some footage from was Nosferatu, directed by Robert Eggers. So I was a huge, huge fan of um, The Northman, right? And this is his kind of take on, on you know, Nosferatu and the, the Dracula tale, right? And it looks amazing. I mean, it looks as lavish as, as The Northman, like on that kind of same scale. Um, you know, commercial in a way that his movies like The Lighthouse and The Witch weren't. Uh, but also, you know, I mean, you could really tell it's a Robert Eggers movie. You, you see Willem Dafoe as Van Helsing. I see Lily Rose Depp. You get a little bit of a, a shot of, of Nicholas Holt, but you don't see Nosferatu himself, Bill Skarsgård. You, you just get little kind of quick glimpses of him. But what you do see makes him look horrific right you know kind of like like in the, the original Nosferatu that you know is is such a famous indelible icon of cinema um yeah I mean this could be one of the best vampire movies ever made I mean I don't want to set the bar too high but it looks amazing it's gonna come out at Christmas time which blows my mind since I'm not a Christmas movie but I think they're probably putting it in awards contention because you know it just it might be that good um, otherwise, you know, I saw some footage from the Bike Riders, which I think looks great, but it was just another trailer. Uh, Conclave, which is directed by the guy who did uh, All Quiet on the Western Front and is a papal thriller uh, about the election of a new pope with Ray Fiennes. Um, that looks like an, an awards contender as well. The other big one that I should talk about is Wicked, right? So Wicked is one of the movies that they're pushing the hardest at CinemaCon this year. and. They gave us all these lanyards and these roses that lit up. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to take any video or, or any photos of it because they don't allow press to photograph anything in the, uh, oh, oh, what do you know? A rose. 
<laughs> just like this. So they gave us these and they lit up. Thank you, Lance, for stealing this. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, it looks like a really cool movie. Uh, I mean, you know, but what's, what's interesting is it's a musical and we didn't see any of the musical numbers at all. Everything they showed us, it makes it look almost like it's a, or like a straightforward fantasy movie. Cynthia Revo is the Wicked Witch of the West. Uh, Ariana Grande as the Good Witch. Um, you know, if you know Wicked, if you know the play, uh, it, it's about how kind of, you know, those roles don't necessarily match up with the with the with the, the reality. I hate to say reality when I'm talking about the Wizard of Oz, but you know, it, it's the, it's kind of a deconstructed, modernized version with Oz. I believe actually the villain played by by Jeff Goldblum. Um, you know, I mean, I'm not necessarily the target audience for something like Wicked, but I do think that it looks like it's a, a really well shot movie and could be fun. You know, it's two parts. It's two movies. Um, I think Universal is really hoping it'll be a big hit and. Judging by the reaction in the in the in the Coliseum, people were going nuts when they when they when they did the, the wicked stuff. So I don't know. It might be a huge blockbuster. We'll see. It comes out on Thanksgiving. Well, that's about it for me today. I guess I'm gonna go and uh, gamble a little bit. So if you see me next time looking really sad, then it'll mean that I lost. So pray for me. <laughs>